Amen. Hey, the resurrection's good news for all people from all places and all languages. Amen. Amen. He is not here. He is risen. Hey, today is Happy Easter Day. I'm so excited uh, that you guys have decided to join us this morning to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus together. And maybe for some of you to hear the good news and may your heart be revived in the name of Jesus this morning. I hope you encounter the person and work of Jesus. We're going to be in John chapter 20, if you want to open your Bible there. Uh, And I want to go ahead and let you know a couple of things that are coming ahead. At the end of our service today, uh, during our time of worship at the close, we're going to do some baptisms. There's already some people that have planned to get baptized, but we're going to offer that to anyone who decides to believe and trust in Jesus today. So if you, at the end of this service, are feeling called and led to be baptized, we would love to help you in that process. We have literally everything you could possibly need. And so if you did not come ready to get baptized, Baptized, we are prepared to make sure that you have what you need to get baptized and to get your regular clothes back on. We will take care of you. And so don't let logistics hinder you. If you're feeling called from the Lord to believe, to trust, to be baptized, please, please join us in that this morning. We'd love to give you the opportunity to do so. Today, we're going to talk about building your life piece by piece piece by piece, but this is P-E-A-C-E, not P-I-E-C-E, piece by piece. You know, the very first words from Jesus to his disciples after his resurrection were four words, peace be with you, peace be with you. And these four words are so significant because for so many of you in the room this morning, this is the very thing you have been searching for your entire life. This is the very thing that you have been eager to find, that you walked in here this morning, maybe hoping that this would be it. This is the very thing that you have been searching for in all the wrong places. And God brought you here this morning to reveal the way of peace from Jesus that he is offering to you. Yesterday, we had a community Easter egg hunt. It was an awesome time together. Uh, We packed out the field. It was just crazy. Uh, A lot more kids came than we were ready for, okay? So we learned a lot of lessons. Uh, We ran out of eggs twice. We ran out of food a hundred over times. We just ran out of everything every three seconds. And so that's a good problem to have. It was an awesome time with our City Life family and our community family here in the neighborhood. Uh, Really thankful for all of you who came out, thankful for you who served. Uh, It was a really great time to bless our community together. But as we did the first Easter egg hunt, I just imagine a bunch of kids have been waiting at least 30 minutes to go on this Easter egg hunt. Some of them are already trying to sneak around and sneak Easter eggs into their basket, even though we're telling them not to. Uh, It was quite the thing to try to control. Once again, I said we learned a lot of lessons, okay? Next time, we're going to have a bunch of bunnies running around, so they're all distracted with bunnies, and then the Easter egg hunt will begin. So we got, we got, we learned some things, right? It was a good time. Uh, But the first Easter egg hunt that we did, as I said, we didn't have enough Easter eggs, uh, and so it was one of those things where it was the survival of the fittest. Only the strong survive. The fastest kid gets the most eggs. And as we tried to control it, you just can't. There was just too many of them. Many of your parents were there. Maybe some of your kids were in the same situation. But after the first Easter egg hunt, there would be like little three-year-olds walking around with an empty bag. And they're crying, and you're just like, oh, my gosh, we totally messed this whole thing up. Like, this is a disaster. We can't have little three-year-olds crying because they didn't find any eggs. Uh, And and it was really sad. So then we said, okay, we're going to do round two, all right? So we sent a bunch of people to the store, and I think we cleared out all the Easter eggs in Giant and Target and all the places around here. We brought them back. We did round two. And hopefully we took care of everybody at that point. But as I was looking at those kids and watching them walk away so sad because they had been searching for something and they could not find it, I thought about so many of you that are coming here this morning that you've been searching for something and you keep coming up empty. You keep coming up empty. You're searching and you're looking for the solution, for something to fill the void, for something to change your life, for something to make you feel better about yourself, for a place to find value, worth, identity. You're looking for a solution. Maybe some of you even recognize that you have sin. There's something wrong and broken in all of us. And you're wondering, like, what is it? What is the solution for the pains and aches of my life? Maybe some of you have been searching for the solution to your current problems, searching for something to be better. You've been looking and looking and looking, but just like the three-year-olds yesterday, your bag keeps coming up empty. And the reason for that is you've been looking in all the wrong places. And today, this very day, Jesus Christ himself has brought you here to tell you himself four words, peace be with you. 
Peace be with you. And instead of building your life, anxiety by anxiety, stress by stress, burden by burden, empty bag by empty bag, day by day, Jesus wants to rebuild your life piece by piece. And he wants to offer you that today. So I hope your heart is ready because he's coming for you. He's coming for you. He's in this place and he's going to speak to your heart. And he's going to offer himself to you. And so I want to show you very, three very simple things about this piece. First, I want to read a passage that I'm talking about. So it starts in verse 19. We're going to go through verse 20, uh, verse uh, 29. So look with me on the screen or in your Bible. Verse 19, on the evening of that day, this is right after the resurrection, the first day of the week, the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and he stood among them and he said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the 12 called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see his hands, in his hands, the mark of the nails, unless I place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Now, eight days later, his disciples were inside again. Thomas was with them. And although the doors were locked, Jesus came. He stood among them and he said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand, place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who are sitting in this seat this morning, 2021, who have not seen and yet have believed. I added the middle part of that just so you're clear, okay? That's not in the Bible, but it felt right to say because that's what he's talking about. And so we're going to look into this peace be with you in three different parts. What I think we see here in this passage that you need to know this morning, the three aspects of peace that the Lord wants to give you today. The first is the peace of his presence, the peace of his presence, the peace of his presence, the peace of his presence. Jesus shows up and he appears in a room, even though the door is locked, which just from the get-go, is going to freak people out, right? If somebody shows up in your room when you're 100% sure the door is locked, you're going to start having some questions as to what is going on, how did they get in here, what happened. And so they're initially shocked, but then their fears, it said, they subsided. Why? Because they looked at him, he showed them his hands and his side, and I love this phrase, it says, they were glad when they saw the Lord. What happened in that very moment? It was the presence of Jesus that took their fears away and gave them gladness. As soon as they knew it was him, then their life changed. And let me tell you something. This picture here is the theme of the entire New Testament where everywhere the presence of Jesus goes, lives get changed and he brings hope, healing, restoration, deliverance, salvation, forgiveness, and a new life. Everywhere Jesus goes, so goes his authority and his love. And when Jesus shows up, everything changes every time, every time. It's about the presence of Jesus. When Jesus shows up, the storms and the winds and the waves get calmed. When Jesus shows up, the dead literally come back to life. When Jesus shows up, the blind see and the deaf hear. When Jesus shows up, the medical condition that no doctor could solve for years gets healed in one second. When Jesus shows up, lives are changed, relationships restored, the outcast is welcomed in, and people's hearts are different. When Jesus shows up, so shows up his authority and his love. What kind of peace does Jesus want to give you today? It's the peace of his presence with you. 
Let me tell you something for you to write down to take with you. Peace is not the absence of crisis, but it's the presence of Christ. If you want to walk out of here with something to live by, with something to handle, even what we've all been through this last year and whatever's to come in your life, peace is not the absence of crisis. If you're hoping that your life is just filled with only good things and that's what it's all about, that's not going to work for you. It's not going to happen and neither would that satisfy you anyways. Peace does not come from the absence of crisis. Peace comes from the presence of Christ. And so many of you walked into this room and the egg you have been looking for is a trouble-free life. The egg you have been looking for is for your situation to get better. The egg you have been looking for is for that problem to go away. You have been looking for peace in all the wrong places. Peace is not the absence of crisis, but peace is the presence of Christ. And Christ wants to offer you himself this morning. He wants to say peace be with you, and he wants to guarantee it by coming to live in you through faith in him. The peace of his presence. God wants to give you this peace today. The question then becomes, how do I receive the peace of the presence of God? The Bible teaches us that because of our sin, our disobedience both to God and to man, because of our thoughts and our actions and our words that are unholy and ungodly, because of these things, sin has separated us from God, that we do not have the relationship with our creator that we were made for. You were made by God and for God. And unless you live with God, you will not be at peace. And your sin has created a separation. It has broken the relationship that you are supposed to have with God. And so the peace of his presence is not accessible to you except by one way. Jesus came. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died a death on the cross to pay for your sins, and he rose from the grave, which we celebrate today and really every day, and he offers you now the way to get right again with God. The Bible says that you can go from being God's enemy to being in his family through faith in Jesus Christ. And from the back of the balcony to the front seat, that is what he's offering you this morning. The peace of his presence. That you would know him. That you would be in his family. That he would come. The Bible teaches us that when you believe and trust in Jesus, repent from your sin and follow him, he sends the Holy Spirit. And instead of him walking beside you, he lives inside of you. You cannot get more close than Jesus can get to you. The peace of his presence So do you have the peace of his presence this morning? Do you have the peace of his presence this morning? Do you have the peace of his presence this morning? Jesus is offering this to you. Believe, trust, receive. The second peace we see here is the peace of purpose. The peace of purpose. Look here, he says, the second time he says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. The peace of purpose. It's the kind of peace that comes by living according to the real meaning of life. It's the kind of peace that comes by living according to your design. It's the kind of peace that comes by finding out the meaning of life and then living accordingly. That's the kind of peace God wants to offer you this morning. The kind of peace that you experience when you lay your head on a pillow at night and you know you've lived a good day where you've loved and served others well. The kind of peace that comes from knowing your life matters. The kind of peace that comes from even being able to live a redeemed life even though you know you have messed up a lot of things. It's the kind of peace that comes with a second chance to live a life of purpose, to have meaning, to have a reason to live, a reason to wake up, a reason to give your all every day. It's the peace of purpose. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, now I am sending you. Imagine this. Jesus rises from the dead, which is a pretty incredible event. He goes to his disciples. The first thing he says is, peace be with you. The second thing he says is, now go on mission. As the Father sent me that I might save the world, now I am sending you to share the message of salvation with the entire world. As soon as Jesus sees them, he assigns them. And you know what he does when he assigns them? He gives them purpose. 
He gives them a reason to suffer. He gives them a reason to live. He gives them a reason to die for the sake of others. He gives them a reason to navigate this life in the ups and downs, in the hills and the valleys. He gives them a reason. Jesus gives purpose. Purpose. It's the peace of purpose. So do you have an answer to the question, why are you alive? What are you doing here? What are you here for? Does your life count for anything? Does it matter? Are you living with the confidence that God wants to give you today that not only has he created you, not only does he love you, but now he assigns you to go do something significant with your life for him? Do you have the peace that comes with purpose? As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Or you could say it this way, Jesus rose again so you can live again. Jesus rose again so that you can live again. Jesus rose again so that you can live again. Listen to me. As we celebrate the resurrection today, one of the things we celebrate is the truth that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. Nothing is impossible with God. And maybe you walked in here this morning feeling like you have nothing to offer, feeling like nobody would love me in the state that I'm in, feeling like your life does not count. It is not significant. It is not maybe even worth living anymore. Some of you have walked in this morning discouraged, depressed, unsure if your life is making a difference or whether it's worth continuing. And let me tell you this, Jesus rose again so that you can live again. Jesus has come to give you the peace of purpose to give you a reason to celebrate. So as we celebrate the resurrection, we celebrate that nothing is impossible with God, which means that nothing is impossible with God for your life. And no matter what you have done, or who you have become, or the kind of things you're ashamed of, or the kind of inadequacies that you may feel, or the things you're insecure about, or the things that bog you down, all of those things Jesus knows and can overcome in the cross. Jesus rose again so you can live again so that you can walk in here unsure and walk out confident with purpose, to wake up every day and live on purpose. So how do you receive the purpose of God? The same way you receive the presence of God, through belief and trust in Jesus Christ, that you would repent from your sin and choose to not only believe him in this moment, but as we believe and trust in him, what we are saying is, I will follow you. Not only do I believe you now, but I will follow you. I will follow you to the ends of the earth. I will obey you. I will give my life to you. I will follow you every day. And we will not do this perfectly, and we will have our mess-ups along the way. But God is so gracious, as you see so often in the scriptures and as we've experienced in our own lives, those of us who know Jesus, that he is so kind and patient. Jesus rose again so that you can live again. And today might be the very day that you start a new life with him. So the peace of his presence and the peace of purpose. The last kind of peace is this. It's the peace of proof. The peace of proof. The peace of his presence, the peace of purpose, and the peace of proof. I love this part with Thomas. Look, Thomas had his doubts, which is totally understandable. And maybe some of you sitting in this room have your doubts. And Jesus, look, Jesus is not afraid of your doubts. Jesus is not worried that you might find something out that might make you disbelieve. Jesus is completely confident and sure in what he has is true. Look at how Jesus handles the doubts of Thomas. He doesn't get mad at him. He doesn't even ignore them. He doesn't say, well, just get over it. No, 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 no. He was very gracious, kind. He revealed himself to him, and he answered his doubts dramatically. He took the doubts of Thomas, and he gave him an answer in the person of Jesus. It's the proof, the peace that comes with proof. And listen, today is not the day nor the time for me to give you 10 different arguments for the resurrection. I would love to do that, and there's a ton of answers for that. If I were to recommend one simple book, it would be The Reason for God by Tim Keller. If you have questions and doubts about the facts and historicity of Jesus Christ and Christianity, I would love to talk with you about it. I will personally take you to lunch and go over those things. You can read this book, and I think all of those things are very important. This is true, and it has all the evidence of something that is true. But that kind of truth, the truth of argument, the truth of all these different facts, is not the kind of truth I'm talking about today. It's not the kind of proof I'm talking about today. And it's not the kind of proof that Jesus gave Thomas. Jesus didn't walk in and say, well, here's 10 reasons why this can be true. What did Jesus do? 
he revealed himself to him. It was the proof that comes by his presence, the proof of his presence. And as so many of our parents have told us, or something we've heard before, the proof is in the pudding. You guys know that phrase? What does that mean? It means once you taste it, once you see it, once you actually engage with it, the proof is in the thing itself. And here's what I'm here to tell you this morning. The proof is in the person of Jesus Christ. It's in the person. It's in the person, not in an argument, which is fine. And they're there, and it is true, and you should learn those things. But it's in the person of Jesus Christ. And what Jesus brought you here to do this morning was to reveal himself to you to say, here I am, look at me. Look at the nails in my hands. Look at the sword that in my side. Look at the hole in my side. And you know, when you, when you die and go to heaven and if you've trusted in Jesus, when you see him, he'll still have nail marks in his hand and a hole in his side. He will forever be the lamb that was crucified. The proof is in the person. The strongest proof for the truth of Jesus is the presence of Jesus. And that's what Jesus showed Thomas to help him in his doubts. And that's what he's here to reveal to you this morning. That's why he said, blessed are those who have not yet seen, but will believe. Because the Bible teaches us that when you see Jesus, you see him with the eyes of your heart and that he begins to open himself to you. And even in this moment, maybe for those of you that are sitting in your seat, he is revealing himself to you that it is true. He is revealing himself to you that he is here. He is revealing himself to you that he wants to bring peace and a new relationship with God. He is revealing himself to you that he loves you. He is revealing himself to you that he wants to forgive you. He is revealing himself to you as the answer, as the solution, as the very thing which you have been looking for. The strongest proof for the truth of Jesus is the presence of Jesus. And he is revealing himself to you this morning. And the question is now, what will you do with what you have heard? What will you do with what you have heard? God is revealing himself as the very thing you have been looking for. And as I was thinking about this, as we close, I wanna give you one last picture. Yesterday when we were doing the, the egg hunt and all that, one of the kids that didn't find any eggs was my three, my four-year-old son, okay? So this was a, a personal offense to me. You know, this was the event I had helped create and it was the event that caused pain for my own children, you know? So he doesn't get any eggs, he's looking, he's so sad. You know, he's carrying the bag like, mm, you know? And you're looking, scrambling, like, can I find an egg? Any well, my parents are in town, and so that's always an awesome thing to have. Well, my dad had found an extra egg somewhere, and so he, fit, he put a dollar bill in it. He didn't find any candy, so he had a dollar in his pocket. Uh, and so he put the dollar bill in the egg, and then as a good person, you know, as a good dad, granddad would do, he just kind of walked over and he threw it down. He was like, look, 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 you found an egg. And then he opens the egg, and it's a dollar bill. And it's like, you're the only kid that got money in his egg. Man, look at that. You found the best egg in the whole world. And so first of all, thank God for grandparents. Props to all you grandparents out there taking care of your grandkids, uh, showing some love. It was an awesome, awesome thing to see, and he was so happy. But as I began to think about today, and as I began to think about your heart and where you're at with the Lord, imagine that my dad had done all that work already. He put the dollar in the egg and he put it down and it was visible to him. All the work had been done. And imagine my son, his name is Jude, walks over to it and he's like, look man, here's for you is this egg. Look at that, you found what you were looking for. And imagine he looks at it and says, no, that's not it. And he walks away. And then he's still walking away, same face, bag empty, sad as can be. And that's exactly, exactly what it would be like for you to have the offer of Jesus this morning presented to you. The work has already been done. Jesus has already died for your sins. You don't have to pay for them if you let him do it. Jesus has already risen again. You don't have to resurrect your own life with self-will and determination. Jesus will do it for you. He's already made peace with you if you would believe and trust in him. He offers you this morning. 
And so the question for you and for me is will we receive the very thing that Jesus is offering you this morning? The egg has been made, the dollar is inside of it, all the work has been done, and now he's offering it to you. And the question for many of you is, will you leave with your bag still empty, still looking, still searching to go on a continual, never-ending search for the right thing, or will you stop your search today? Will you say yes to what Jesus is offering you, pick up that egg, pick up the cross, and say yes to him? Don't leave this place with your bag empty. Don't leave this place with your bag empty. Do not leave this place with your bag empty. Jesus is offering himself to you this morning from the back of the balcony to the front. Peace be with you, he says. The peace of his presence. The peace of living a life on purpose. And ultimately, the peace that comes with proof by encountering the real Jesus. So what will you do with what you have heard Don't leave this place with your bag empty. Let me pray for us. I want to give us a time to respond to him. As I said, we're going to do some baptisms, and if you're feeling led from the Lord to be involved in that, I want you to go ahead and and close your eyes, and I want you to let the truth of the scriptures and, and the gospel message and the love and work of Jesus sit with your heart. Where are you at with him this morning? Do you have the peace of his presence? Have you believed and trusted in him or is your bag still empty? And I wanna give you a chance in this very moment to believe and to trust and to receive the free gift that Jesus is offering you now of salvation in his name. Where are you at with him? The Bible says, that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that he raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. That's it. You don't have to be a, be a great person. Go get your life together. No, 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 no. Right now is the time. Don't say later. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. So now, right now, with your eyes closed, go ahead and engage with the Lord. Say, I, I confess I confess that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you died and rose again. Today is the day that I receive, that I repent from my sin and I receive the free gift. I don't want to leave here with my bag empty, Lord. Please, God, I receive you this morning. Just tell him that. If that's you this morning, just tell him that. There's no magic words. You don't need a pastor or even a church. It's just your heart and God's heart. He brought you here this morning, not just to hear a message, but to change your life. Encounter him, receive, believe, trust, obey. And so take the next minute, respond to Jesus. Respond to Jesus. Receive the work that he has accomplished for you. Let these four words resonate in your heart. Peace be with you. I'm going to give you a minute, and you need to do business with God. Receive, believe, trust. you're here today and that's a decision that you have made every eye closed heads bowed if you're here and that's a decision that you have made or a decision that you would like to make and you'd like to talk to someone would you please raise your hand just so that we can know so I can pray for you and so that we can help follow up in this process with you if that's a decision that you would like to make this morning a decision that you have made a decision that you would like to talk to us more about please go ahead and raise your hand and then we're going to give you a chance to respond thank you very much So let me pray for us. And after I pray, we're gonna stand and we're gonna sing and we're gonna respond to Jesus. And as we sing, we're gonna have people down front over here. If you would like to get baptized or if you would like to talk more about your relationship with God, you can go ahead and walk to them as we're singing. And we'd love to talk to you more about that. And so let me pray and then we'll all respond. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your death, your resurrection, for the peace that you offer us in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We pray that every heart in this morning would receive, believe, trust that nobody would leave here with their bags empty. 
We love you, Lord Jesus. We celebrate you and what you've done this morning. It's in Jesus' name. Everybody said with me, amen, amen. Well, why don't we stand and respond, celebrate the Lord. And if you would like to get baptized or make a decision or talk to somebody more about Jesus, come down front. You can talk to Taylor right here.